All right, getting right back into uh, Genesis uh, 2.24. And uh, in this video, we're going to be comparative to the spiritual nature of uh, man, which is on the right side of the brain, versus the carnal nature of man, which is on the left side of the brain. You see how our brain processes this information. And then, of course, uh, for the right side of the brain, through prayer and through, uh, and through uh, meditation, to the Lord God to transfer our emotions and our feelings onto God's uh, uh, into God's system in that heavenly state, and to try to get a grip on how this works and see what the what new information we can get out of this is learn how these old books pertain to ourselves. Genesis two twenty four. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. And they shall be one flesh. Uh, and spiritual nature sees this as a, as a, you know, just a close relationship between uh, a man and his wife. But uh, spiritually, this is when we're all joined in Christ, in uh, what we call the afterlife in that heaven state. We're all joined the same, not just a man and wife, but brother to brother, sister to sister, and so forth, father to son, and mother to daughter. It's all we're all one. And they were both naked. And man and his wife were not ashamed. There's nothing wrong with being naked. We had nothing to be guilty for at that time. We were fairly unknowledgeable. We just had to listen to what God said He wanted us to do and do it. And we were okay in that state. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. Now the serpent more susceptible, he's more lower to the ground than say a hog is or a cow or a beeve or a, a fox or all these things. The serpent, all of his belly touches the ground. If we're going to think in terms as the old Hebrew writers, when they used uh, pictures for words, uh, they used pictures too explicit, uh, uh, one emotion uh, more so over the other one in that sense. So if you're talking about a snake, you're talking about something that his full body was in contact with the earth. He's pretty low. He's subtle, too. Uh, at the beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Let me get... And now we're in three. Uh, that was uh, the number three starting. Let me get over here to uh, get my camera moved. Yea, have God said, Yea, shall not eat of the tree of the garden? Now, this is the first question. Funny, I don't have a note there, but this is like the first question. And look what it's doing. It's asking a question about God. You know, something I always notice about people with mental problems and um, uh, songwriters, uh, famous songwriters like uh, Bob Dylan and all these people that are tortured and painted, painters, artistries, uh, artists, all these types of people, they're all suffered with this question about God. I mean, it's, uh, the questions about God is at the root of everybody's sanity or insanity. And here we are with the, the intellectual, the woman, Eve, this, this uh, serpent coming to her, this left side of the brain. And it's becoming aware, it's becoming awake, and that's asking questions. And uh, I'm not going to get into whether I think that, that the devil is a natural physical state. I think everybody in this story, when God loops back around, and when God finally becomes what it is He has always been since the beginning and always will be since the end, God will also, I think God will interact throughout the plan, throughout man's story, and I think he did interact with the people of this Bible. And he did have these people really truly exist. Which in that sense, the Satan, what we call the devil, the serpent, I think he must have really truly existed. Only in order for this story to be told for our good, for our well-being. That being said, I'll move on. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden." But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, 
at least we die. Here, Eve, the intellect of man, he's still remembering what God said and he's not looking for trouble. But trouble has presented itself by way of the serpent and the tree. And the serpent said unto the woman, Shall uh, we shall not surely die. Now here's a direct contradiction. This is a left brain thinking thing if I've ever seen it. That is straight out of left field, as the old as the old uh, words is. For God doeth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods. And notice there's a small g here. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Well, is this necessarily a good thing? I don't know that it's good, but I do know this. In the world of spiritualism, it's probably going to be a completed thing. It's probably going to be a thing that requires us to be educated for our own good. If, can, if we can take God on His Word and read the, the words in the carnal and stay in that vein, I know many, many good men that have done that. They've all come short. They've all failed in the sense that they've all needed Jesus Christ, but therein lies the reason for Jesus Christ. God knows we would all fail. God knows we would all fall when it comes to understanding God's rules, God's nuts and bolts, God's plan. Uh, God is uh, God is God. He has no trouble in knowing and understanding. Just like he had no trouble in understanding that the serpent would come and that uh, this left brain would start doing exactly how he designed it. Because the brain is created in God's image. That means God has two sides like the brain does. There's a left side to, to God and there's a right side to God. The right side of God is where truth and love and justice and everything like that come from. And the left side of God is where uh, the devil and bad things and, and uh, those types of things, the watchers and all these types of things come from. Uh, we tend to look at God and we say, well, gee, if God knows everything, why does He let the devil have... Why do we have a devil even? I learned something from an odd place. It was an old movie called God. And John Denver played the, a character in it and there was an old actor... Uh, George Burns was in that movie. And he said something in that line of that movie that has great wisdom. And I never forgot it. it uh, John Denver kind of asked God, you know, well, why is there bad things? Why is there the devil? And George Burns, playing the part of God, looked at John Denver and said, have you ever found out how to make something with only one side? And of course, in that moment, uh, you start thinking, on your own, escape the movie for a minute, and the answer is no. You cannot make anything with one side. It's impossible. You can make a double-headed coin where one side of that coin could look exactly like the other side of that co or the coin, but you're still left with one side of the coin versus the other side of the coin. Everything has to have a reverse. Everything has to have, uh, every positive has to have a negative. And this is why the left brain works the way it does. And the right brain works the way it does. And I'm starting to feel that this is also why the pineal gland gets all the, uh, all the play in our speech and our studies as the pineal gland uh, receives. Because the pineal gland is in the center of the two brains. And to find balance in the center of the two brains, uh, the pineal gland is uh, almost like a third eye that's deep inside your skull. I, I was told one time, it even has a retina or some parts of the actual eye that it kind of like is an actual eye or the components, some of the components for one inside your, the center of your brain. All that being said, all that really means to me is that there has to be some balance. You have to be able to uh, absorb the, uh, the uh, carnal state of our processing this information to ever get to the spiritual state. And then once we're at the spiritual state, on the right, without the price paid by the carnal state, the Jesus in the flesh, none of this means any good and we have no clear pathway to the eternal state without it. So it's like you can't really uh, negate one without the other. Boy, I wish I read my watch before I started. It's like in order for this thing to work, 
we're most likely going to have to have a balance of the carnal state versus the spiritual state because until we leave these bodies uh, we need them both we need the devil and we need Jesus in order for us to balance out our our understanding our with our ununderstanding uh, with our love for our hate in order to balance these things out we're going to have to educate ourselves on both of these stories carnal and spiritual I'm going to dog it off at seven looks like and then uh, I know I'm doing a lot of talking and slowing us down, but it's one of those things where if you, you, know, if you just read this word, it would be nothing but the, uh, the uh, carnal jumping out at us. And this is the whole point of this study, is to analyze uh, carnal from spiritual so we can find some type of balance between the two that we can get to where God wants us to be. Uh, that being said, thank you for hitting that button and, and watching these videos. And, uh, and thank you for that, and we will see you next time.